My name is Benjamin Terry. I'm an associate professor of mechanical engineering from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and I collaborate with Dr. Keeley Busing, who is a trauma and critical care surgeon from the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Our research collaboration focuses on the development of therapies and devices for the treatment of acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. The purpose of this video is to provide you with a real-time update on our research efforts to improve outcomes of patient stacking with ventilators. Please treat this information as anecdotal. We will eventually provide a sufficient number of trials to achieve statistical power, but we wanted to share in real time our progress with the hope that this information could be useful to respiratory therapists who may be forced to put multiple patients on a single ventilator or, in other words, patient stack. The information provided here is meant to present options and alternatives and is intended to present our work for research purposes only. This video is not intended to serve as medical advice, nor does it constitute any patient-provider relationship. One of the difficulties in patient stacking is that lung compliance and thoracic dynamics between two patients is not usually identical. In general, more severe ARDS leads to lower lung compliance. If you have stacked patients with different lung compliances, the patient with the highest compliance will receive most of that tidal volume. Thus, it's impossible to optimally stack patients using standard tubing sets that have only been split. The purpose of this video is to provide a solution to the problem of mismatched lung compliance in patient stacking. Our proposed solution is to insert variable flow restrictors on the inhalation limbs of each breathing circuit, as well as a three-way valve on the proximal pressure lines. For patients utilizing a pressure control setting, this allows the therapist to decrease the tidal volume to the patient with the higher compliance. That supports the sicker patient with his volume needs without overventilating the healthier patient. Here are the steps to do this. Step one is open both flow resistors on the inhalation limbs. Step two is determine which patient has lower lung compliance. We'll call this the sickest patient. Step three is set the three-way valve so the vent is controlling to the sickest patient. Due to the compliance mismatch between patients, the healthier patient will be overventilated at this point, as will be indicated by hypocarbia. Step four is titrate the tidal volume to the healthy patient by partially closing the flow restrictor on his inhalation limb. You can titrate based on end tidal CO2 levels, for example, or by formal arterial blood gas monitoring. As the lung compliance of the two patients changes, you can start back on step one in real time and readjust as necessary to optimize patient support. So that is the summary of our system and technique. What we will show you next is a benchtop simulation of the technique and two live animal studies wherein we stacked human-sized pigs with a large compliance mismatch. To induce the mismatch, one of the pigs had induced ARDS by administering nebulized LPS endotoxin until it reached a P to F ratio of less than 200. The other pig was uninjured and healthy. Note that our method was developed using the HT70 ventilator, which has an external exhalation valve. For ventilators with an internal exhalation valve, it would be necessary to add one-way valves where the individual exhalation limbs reconnect. This would prevent backflow from bypassing the flow restrictor. This is an image of our setup. Each individual component will be explained later in the video. This is another view of the exact same setup. In our benchtop setup, we added an extra resistor to resemble a less compliant lung. However, this will not be necessary when using this setup for patients. Here we have the inhalation tube split with a T connector. The circuits run until they reach the needle valves. These valves can be used to control the amount of air resistance to each patient. Next, for this benchtop experiment, we have added another resistor to restrict flow into one lung, therefore modeling a low compliant lung, while the other lung has better compliance. Each patient has their own exhalation tube that are actuated by these blue external flow valves. 
Both patient's flow valves are connected to the ventilator with a Y valve fitting. They each have their own proximal line that runs back to the ventilator. Here you can switch between each patient's proximal line to monitor on the ventilator. In this pressure controlled test, the less compliant lung on the left is receiving the controlled pressure. This in turn gives more volume to the lung on the right. After tightening the resistor on the more compliant lung, it will bring its volume down, matching the less compliant lung. This is important to ensure you do not overinflate the more compliant lung. Now, both lungs are inflating with the same volume. The HT70 ventilator is set up with a shortened patient circuit to prevent hypercapnia. Also, since the exhalation valve and the proximal line sensors are external, we have the three-way flow valve already in place and off to the side is the Y adapter. The placeholding connector here will be replaced by the flow resistor. The T adapter is also in place with the cap on one end. We have the second breathing circuit off to the side that has also been shortened and is ready to go with the resistor and the splitter already in place. The first step for combining the circuits is to place the remaining flow resistor in line with one of the pigs by removing the blue adapter. Now we are ready to connect both pigs to a single ventilator. The cap on the T connector is removed and the second patient circuit is connected. Then. The external flow valves are connected via the Y fitting to the ventilator. Another person then quickly connects the new patient circuit to the second pig. Both pigs have been successfully placed on a single ventilator. Two sets of two animals have been tested thus far. Each test had one ARDS animal and one healthy animal. After the animals were placed on the same ventilator, the flow resistor on the healthy animal circuit was adjusted based on end tidal CO2 readings from both animals. These graphs are from one of the two tests and were made for the healthy patient and the ARDS patient to track the vital signs and PO2 values over the course of the experiment. The left y-axis shows values for SpO2, end tidal CO2, mean arterial pressure, or MAP, and PO2 from blood sampling. The right y-axis shows values for heart rate. The ARDS patient was given a 4 mg per kilogram dose of dissolved LPS, which was nebulized into the lungs. Blood samples were taken to measure oxygenation. A P2F ratio of less than 200 for one blood sample was used as a marker for the onset of ARDS. Once the patient met this criterion, it was moved from its ventilator to the healthy patient's ventilator and attached via the multi-patient breathing circuit. The flow resistor in the healthy patient circuit line was adjusted to restrict air flow, forcing more air to the ARDS patient. Both patients received 50% FiO2 from the beginning of the experiment until 4 hours after combining their circuits. The healthy patient's PO2 values remained stable for the 4 hours. The ARDS patient's PO2 values remained low, but stable, and then started to increase in the 4th hour. The heart rate and tidal CO2, mean arterial pressure, and SpO2 remained stable for the duration of the study. Thus. Both animals were sufficiently ventilated on a single ventilator for the duration of this study by titrating tidal volume based on end tidal CO2.